Okay, well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. I'm Evan Atkinson. I'm our Culture and Workplace Associate here at Cockroach Labs, and I'm joined by some lovely folks. Uh, today, we're going to discuss identifying and developing skills for working in tech, in the tech industry. Um, so those of us that are here today, including myself, uh, we came from some non-tech backgrounds, um, or at least have a helpful framework for thinking about the skill sets that are required to succeed in the tech industry. Uh, so we're going to cover a range of subjects today. Uh, we're going to start with soft skills that are valuable um, in the tech industry and in our respective fields, uh, but then we're going to dive into some of the more technical uh, knowledge that's useful in our work. But first, I want to go around and do uh, introductions. So if you could say your name and what you do here at Cockroach, uh, and I'll toss it over to Devin Eyre. Kick us off. Hello there. Uh, I'm Devin Eyre. I'm the Recruiting Programs Manager here at Cockroach Labs. Um, I'm James. I am on the dev, dev infrastructure team um, here at Cockroach Labs, um, supporting all of the uh, developers with our tooling. Awesome. Yeah, um, my name is uh, JP Cisnetos. Um, I am the events marketing manager here at Cockroach, um, aka now the virtual events uh, marketing manager. A pivot that I <laughs> think a lot of our departments have been making. <laughs> Um, well, awesome. So kind of diving right in, uh, we're going to talk about our career path. Um, so for those of us uh, who are in not strictly technical uh, roles right now, talk a little bit about what you were doing um, before coming to Cockroach Lab and that process of how you got here. Um, so let's Yeah, so I come from a pretty unique background. Um, growing up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, I was a professional opera singer. Um, I used to sing around the country um, or even around the world performing opera with Santa Fe Opera. Um, and then eventually moved to DC to study musical theater in college. Um, after pursuing this for several years and really ultimately working as a bartender on the side, um, I ultimately through encouragement of friends and some really great mentors, I landed in the world of tech, uh, first starting in sales um, and now making my way to events and New York City and at Cockroach Labs. Awesome. Devin Air, what were you up to before you came here? Yeah, so I actually originally saw myself as going into uh, academia as so I was preparing for uh, applications to uh, history, PhD programs, and things like uh, American cultural studies. Uh, and I landed a job for that year in which I was prepping for those applications at a recruiting agency. Uh, and I think that, you know, a lot of the uh, work that I did in college was centered around interacting with people. I worked at our admissions office, uh, largely presenting on the student experience in front of a lot of people and basically trying to get them to apply to college. Uh, and so I guess, you know, this, this tech recruiting agency saw this fit and said, okay, uh, why don't you come along and we'll give it a go. And then I, I noticed uh, Cockroach Labs was hiring a technical recruiter and I really started liking what I was doing, getting to talk to a lot of different people and really get to hone in on uh, what makes folks tick in terms of making these really big life decisions and making sure that uh, I could be a part of pairing them with the place that was right for them. And it helps that Cockroach was the kind of place that I really wanted to work at. I was like, that's the kind of place you should be representing. Um, yeah, and I, I write also. <laughs> awesome. Um, I actually have a similar uh, history myself. I'm in a non-technical role doing culture and workplace kind of just fun morale stuff, especially right now. Um, I was actually in sales, uh, my first job out of college. Um, and in college, I was doing a lot around scholarships and kind of similar to what Devonair was doing with admissions and trying to uh, encourage people to get involved. I did graphic design for a little bit. So kind of all over the board. Um, I also got journalism education and I started to look at jobs where I could take little pieces of each of those, right? Because I was kind of jack of all trades, master of none, um, not necessarily enough journalism education to go work for Wall Street Journal, not enough this, but you can take these disparate pieces, these soft skills you learn, it, you can 
write really well anywhere if you're a journalist. You can talk to people if you're trying to work in admissions. All of these different pieces, I think, can come together in interesting ways, and it came together in sales. Um, and then I started looking for a company that had culture and values that I think aligned with my own, um, and that ended up being Cockroach in the tech sphere. And there's a lot of things I've learned very quickly about tech work um, that I didn't know before, but I think it ended up being a really cool fit for a non-technical person that these tech companies are starting to look for roles that aren't necessarily technically related. Uh, but speaking of things that are technically related, James, can you chat a little bit about what you were doing before you came to Cockroach? Um, yeah, so, you know, before Cockroach, um, I've been doing programming uh, for many years, um, also have been a uh, manager and VP of engineering at a couple of different startups. Um, and, you know, my, my background and what drew me into tech, um, like, you know, from an early age, I was interested in computers. Um, and I think mostly gaming related, but then we finally got a um, like computer with a color monitor um, in, when I was in high school and got on CompuServe. Um, so I started getting the internet. And then, uh, you know, when I went to college, I learned how to do um, like create web pages. And then like second semester, I, start, like, I took my first programming class and then I was like, okay, this is like great. I wanna do this. Um, so it was kind of like the clincher. Um, to go into the field. Um, but, you know, at the same time, um, you know, I also did a minor in French and a minor in studio art. And so, you know, there's, and have done a lot of other um, non-technical things through, you know, my, um, through my years. Um, learning languages is great. You know, there's so many fun things, but um, that's how I got into, uh, tech. Awesome. So I think some context, especially right now, is useful during our current time with COVID and the downturn. The tech industry um, looks pretty stable um, compared to a lot of other jobs. We're able to work at our same capacity and work remote, which is we're very fortunate to be able to do that. Um, so the tech industry is obviously looking a lot more attractive to a lot of applicants right now. Um, so what advice would you all give to someone um, trying to decide if they want to get into the tech industry um, themselves? I guess the biggest thing for me is um, know your brand. Um, and what I mean by this is you don't necessarily have to have technical skills or particular skills ascertaining to certain roles in tech. But what you do need to know is what you're really, really good at. And being able to communicate to a recruiter, or being able to communicate that on your resume or cover letter, um, that, that you have um, skills and that can be translated into something technical in a way, um, that makes you more marketable. Um, for example, in my real world experience, um, I was able to, um, one thing that I really did with theater was I started my own theater company um, in Washington, DC, and we put on several shows a different year. Um, I was able to take this skill set um, and translate that into event experience, um, which helped me land started my first roles in tech in marketing, uh, doing events, and that helped launch my career doing events um, at several different companies. So it's about how you market certain uh, skills that you might have um, that and translating that. And oftentimes that makes you stand out as a candidate because that's really exciting. Um, it's something new. You have a new refreshing outlook on things, and it kind of makes you more valuable and a little bit more creative. I'm curious, actually, what Devin Ayer thinks about that from a recruiting perspective. What kind of these, what what parts of your brand are we looking at? What parts of your brand are we looking at? That's a really interesting question. And I think that, you know, particularly with the roles that uh, I've, I've looked at, um, some highlights, uh, I uh, handled Evan's recruiting process. Um, and so that was pretty great for me because uh, it was an example of being able to, you know, parse a resume for things that came together to uh, make you a fit for this sort of culture and uh, workplace role, right? Because on the one hand, uh, Evan did some event planning in college and did some sort of larger scale things. And we were able to dive into those a bit more on our phone call. Um, and 
there was a, a lot that sort of pointed to someone who engaged with a lot of people in a lot of ways. And if you come from sales, chances are, especially you know, in the earlier stages of your career, but always, you're going rapid fire, reaching out to people, trying to find ways to uh, get them to communicate with you and to sort of buy in to what you're selling. Uh, and I thought, and often think, you know, these, these profiles are definitely worth having a conversation with because there are people who, you know, point, paint really good pictures in their resume and then you speak to them and then there's no depth there. And then you have people who paint really good pictures in their resume and then there's a ton of depth. You learn way more. Uh, so I would say in terms of building your brand, having a LinkedIn that clearly articulates uh, your skill set just as much as your resume does is good uh, because sometimes I double check there to see if there are any other details. Uh, making sure that the strengths from all of the places you've been, even if they're not related to the role that you're applying per se, are highlighted in connection to that role. That's a big deal. Um, and also emphasizing ways in which you're learning or growing. You know, uh, I do take a look at uh, cover letters in the tech world with as many as I read the shorter uh, and punchier the better, but uh, they are something that can sort of help articulate uh, some, some gaps. Uh, and that would be my advice. That's, I think that's a useful perspective. James, what, what kind of things would you tell someone who's looking to break into tech right now? Um, and everything you guys have said is like awesome, <laughs> um, definitely. And I think in addition, there's um, be open to a wide variety of like possible roles that you might be interested in. Um, you know, like just technically there's, um, a lot of different types of things that you can do. Um, you know, so you guys have been talking about like recruiting and, um, like event planning and people things, but on the technical end, you know, you get to do, there's like it, there's writing software, there's testing, um, things. And, and even like in the writing software, there's different levels that you can do that at, you know, you can do it like. Um, front end in the UI or in an app, um, like on your phone or for phones or for desktops. Um, you can also write, you know, websites that are, you know, more some back end things that are just um, interacting with the front end. And then there's getting into operating system or like databases or other deep, deep technical things. Um, and there's also different types of companies. Um, and so like, Sometimes, you know, you might, you might find that um, you, you're someone that wants to do something more consumer based. Um, and for uh, the, you know, general person out in the public, but maybe you like things that are more um, uh, enterprise based or, you know, medical. Um, so there's like computers, technical things are everywhere. <laughs> um, be open to a wide variety of things that you know may interest you. I think that's really good advice, especially as the job market can get tough if you're as pigeonholing yourself, for lack of a better term, into one thing. You say, hey, I've had experience coding for an app yeah. and I'm just looking at apps right now. But yeah. there's different skills that you might learn from this work with apps or this work in a certain language of coding that yeah. you can learn. For instance, I know we teach all of our engineers Go here because we use Go in our tech stack. That's not something that, as far as I'm aware, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, not many engineers are working with kind of day to day. Uh, it's not, it's not as, uh, a lot of people use it, but it's not as widely used as you know, Java, C, C++, Python, Ruby, PHP, JavaScript, you know, those are much more commonly used. Um, yeah. Gotcha. And which is one thing I would say to add just a little bit of color there about uh, folks who are looking to apply maybe here specifically. We ver are very explicit on our uh, job descriptions. You don't have to know those languages. Like Evan said, uh, we look for folks who have gotten really good at software engineering. And then we figure if you've done that, you can keep doing it and pick up another way of communicating with the computers. Uh, 
So that's something to keep in mind. Hone whatever technically, uh, you know, picks, you can pick up uh, easiest at first, and then you'll grow from there. We know that. And I think like dovetailing with that also is um, anything in tech is always about learning. You will always be learning something new and growing. There's just no way around that. Um, just realize that and internalize it. <laughs> There's always something new, right? You've, nev- you've, you've not mastered tech by any means. I think no one can claim that. No, no. <laughs> I've been doing it like close to 20 years and there's so much I don't know, but there's so much I do know, you know, right. like it's, um, there's so much. I think that's a good transition. Speaking of things you do know that can translate to a bunch of different things, talking about these soft skills that you've learned. So maybe, um, your ability to understand different coding languages, or, you know, we've talked a little bit about event planning. Devin Air got into my hiring process, which is kind of funny. That's my part covered, but, um, I'm curious what kind of soft skills that you think that might be overlooked or might be something that other candidates might not be bringing that might set you up um, when applying into the tech industry. What are some important soft skills um, for your field? Uh, JP, I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I think oftentimes, um, oftentimes like in my realm of like sales and marketing, um, it's really what it comes down to is just being a good person. Um, if you can go in the room and show that you are ready to learn, that you do have a base set of skills, but you're also like just a really good person that people want to work with, that oftentimes makes you stand out a lot more. Um, and I think that's very, very valuable because at the end of the day, when you're sales or marketing, you're oftentimes like the front lines and you're the first person that people meet. Um, and if you're able to convey that energy and that you're excited to be there, that's awesome. And that's way more valuable. Um, so I think there's a couple times where we've been in the room where I was a candidate that may have been very, very experienced, but they just were not someone that we really wanted to work with. Um, and they lost a role to someone who was maybe less experienced because they were just great. So I think, I think oftentimes just be yourself um, and, and be a good person. That's it. <laughs> I think that's great advice for life uh, in general. Devin Air, um, from the recruiting perspective, what do you think are these soft skills, maybe in your own field, that have helped set you apart? Yeah, it, well, in my field, I think one of the biggest uh, things you can do is try to uh, problem solve. And I think that applies across the board as well. Right, it works. It, it, it influences how you tinker on the engineering side. It influences the way that you try to uh, reach new leads and new audiences in marketing. But it could be something as simple as you know, clearly detailing in one of your last roles or in a project that you did what the problem was uh, and how you approached it. You know, for example, uh, I would say in uh, recruiting, if you perhaps had trouble. Uh, getting sort of a buy-in uh, maybe from a group of peers in a class project as a very hypothetical example. I'm very much, you know, seeing what comes out as I go. Uh, <laughs> and you kind of had to get feedback from all of these sorts of people on how you uh, move that project forward in a way that gets everyone excited and then build something at the end of the day that has the consensus of five different people, whether that's something like, you know, uh, an extracurricular program, or it's a project you did for your Spanish class. Walking people through, helping them see exactly what you did in a way that can translate into, oh, if this person can parse this problem, they can likely parse others. That makes a a huge difference, um, I would say. And I, I thought about giving an example from my own career, but I figured maybe, you know, if you weren't already in recruiting, that's something that would come to mind for me if I were looking for someone, uh, closer to an entry level role. Interesting. James, I know you already mentioned uh, a little bit about your ability to learn and grow and, you know, seek out new, be flexible, right? Be able to adapt Mm -hmm. to new challenges and problems. Are there any other soft skills that you think are really important specifically in like engineering and the technical side? Yeah. Um, One is perseverance. Um, you need to be able to try things out. Keeping at a problem, you know, things fail. 
um, they need to be fixed. Uh, so really being able to dig in um, and getting great at anything, you need to stick with it for a long time. You know, you can't just like come into it and it be great at it. Um, you know, any, anything you need to build on existing knowledge or you need to start out from scratch and then like have, a, you know, start with a base that you can then build from. Um, so, you know, it takes perseverance to get to um, being able to make a lot of connections between different things when you're, you know, deep problem solving. Um, you know, and then also social and communication skills are really really important for um, writing software, working on technical teams. You know, I think there's this idea that a coder or like someone that's technical is really like off in the corner doing their own thing, but that's not very true in the real world when you're working. Um, you know, you're working on a team with a team of people, you have users, you have, um, other community members, um, team, you know, like there's, and you need to be able to communicate with them, work with them, um, and associate with them on, on a daily basis. Um, different roles, it's different, you know, and, um, you know, you might need to be working with end users when you are writing an app or doing uh, user interface work. Um, and then you also need to work with, um, you know, closer with product people um, or designers uh, and understand like how people like have empathy for, you know, the user, your users and um, your community members. Um, so those are a couple things that are really not talked about as much, I think. Um, well, perseverance might be talked about a lot, but um, the social communication skills with empathy for um, your teammates, users, community members, those are still really important. I, I think that's the empathy and connection skills, especially uh, a technical job, because you're right, there is that, I guess that stereotype about the, the lone engineer in the corner, mm -hmm. just like heads down on a computer. And there are definitely moments where you can kind of you know, put yourself in focus, but that's not yes. your job. What I've noticed, um, especially because since Cockroach is my first tech job, is the amount of collaboration that happens between all departments, like yep. getting uh, our 20.1 release out. That's the product team, that's the marketing team, the technology team, that's events raising awareness about it. That's uh, the people team, making sure that everybody has the resources they need to function while we're getting that release out. So it's across the board something you need to be able to say, this is maybe where I'm having some trouble. Could you assist with that? Or I've finished this piece. So now the product team can take it over the edge with the user interface or something like that. There's a lot more opportunities to, for communication in just about any role, I think, in the tech industry than uh, one might think from the outside. Yep. So. Transitioning away from soft skills, getting into the more the hard skills, the more technical skills, um, stuff like coding, event planning, uh, sourcing, closing stuff. Um, how did you learn some of these very specific skills that you might not be able to get from just, I don't know, from just experience? JP, maybe you can talk a little bit more to that. Yeah, I think I've learned everything that I know from being thrown in and just like having to do it. Um, but I think that was, that's how I personally learned. I know that's not for everybody. I know there's many different learning styles, but that's how I personally learn. So I just threw myself in, in environments where I wasn't necessarily in my strongest point. But what was great about that was I was very thankful that my first companies that I started out working for, and even with Cockroach in some regards, um, I was given the opportunity to fail, to then learn and get stronger and get better. Um, and through that, I've kind of streamlined my process and then also um, have just been able to take high points from several different things that I've done in my career and be able to make myself stronger. Hmm. James, I know you said that you've, you've been coding and programming for some time, but are there any, um, 
other hard skills that you think you've learned or maybe a, an interesting way to think about how you learn those skills? Um, I've, I've like used a lot of different ways of learning the skills over the years. Um, you know, the first way is in school. Um, but I also learned very different things in school than I learned on the job. Um, and so like a lot of what I learn now, um, I learned because I need it for my job. Um, and, and so I will learn it while I'm doing my job. <laughs> um, like literally like, you know, Oh, I don't know how to do that. I need to go look up the documentation and understand this more. So I learn it. I need to learn the source code. So I have to read the source code and understand what it's actually doing. Um, I need to learn how these tools are, um, working. So, you know, sometimes it's documentation, sometimes it's just playing with it. Um, and there's, there's a lot that I end up learning because I try stuff out, you know, so, um, instead of going looking up the docs, sometimes I'll just be like, okay, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? What happens, what happens if I do this third thing? And just to like, kind of learn the bounds of what actually happens. Um, and part of how I can do that is because I have like a large base of things that I've learned in the past that I can build on and like draw sources of ideas from. Um, and then, you know, another way that I learn a lot is from just talking to other people. Um, you know, if, if I'm having trouble like getting to a solution for something or like figuring something out, I might actually go and ask people, Hey, you know, um, like someone else on my team, can we just talk about this a little bit and, you know, we'll bounce some ideas back and forth. And then like, I'll have a whole new set of ideas to like go and do like investigation on. Those are a couple of ways. I think that's great. We're in this together, right? We're all learning together yeah. how to build this product that we have. I think a lot of my job, I have a very unique role. A lot of my hard skills are in a way soft skills. Um, there are different pieces that I've been able to learn, but I think the hard skills like writing and communication, I got a journalism degree in college. So a lot of that was how do you communicate very effectively, engagingly and concisely, which is something as, as an organization, we move really quickly. I have to be able to say, Hey, here's X amount of things that I've done. Here's these things that you need to know that are coming up in the next few weeks in ways that people are going to get excited about. And also that they frankly have the time to read. We're moving at a mile a minute. You have to have something really quick that you can engage with. Um, so I would say take time out of your schedule to improve your communication skills. That can help you in anything you do, not even just tech. Um, if you want to get into a role that's a hybrid of a bunch of things, uh, like mine is, take these opportunities that you have. I know Devin Air mentioned the the mix of things on your LinkedIn and your resume. Be able to tell your story. Uh, I think storytelling is one of the most important things you can do for yourself and um, for others, frankly, that helps with communication. Learn ways to tell stories that can engage with other people. Tell your own story. Um, it'll help in a lot of things. Devin Air, I'm curious what kind of hard skills you've learned that have helped uh, in people in recruiting. Yeah, so uh, a couple of things come to mind. First and foremost, you know, we've heard uh, some things here about uh, learning while doing. And I think that that is an incredibly important uh, thing to keep in mind. And you can do without having the job to some extent. Right? Like if part of what you need to do is learn to identify uh, the types of profiles that are uh, really attractive in terms of hiring for uh, burgeoning tech companies, Go on LinkedIn and take a look at the profiles of some software engineers and check out what skills they're listing. Check out the types of projects that they're working on uh, so that you have an idea of how to communicate uh, what it is that the people you'd be looking for are doing and what you know about finding them, right? This is assuming you really want to be a recruiter. Uh, most of the people that I know actually just end up uh, finding their way into it, myself included. But I think that that same thing can be applied to a lot of arenas, right? If you are a uh, software engineer or someone who wants to be a software engineer, I have a, a few friends who are going through things like boot camps and self-teaching now. 
really learn how to build an application really well and deploy it. Uh, you know, if uh, things like you know Kubernetes and, and Docker and all of these are really difficult in modern technologies, if you can learn to use those and demonstrate that to people, that'll make a difference. Uh, I know people who've, who've become software engineers. There are people at Cockroach Labs who've become software engineers without the sort of a formal education in it. Um, so go and learn and show that you've learned in, that, in the ways that you tell your story. Um, in terms of the way that you communicate with people, that's something you can always be working on. Uh, we, we close, even though we don't think about it, in our day-to-day -day lives, right? Anytime we, we convince someone to help us out or do something for us, we've done something to build a relationship. Uh, and whether that's you know from a pragmatic perspective or for friendship is a moot point. Uh, what, what matters is that you are learning to communicate everything you already know. And the reality is we all have frameworks for learning. Uh, some of us cook better than we dance, uh, but at the end of the day, understanding how you've picked up what you know now and applying that can make it so that you can join us or some other company as an engineer or a recruiter or a culture and workplace experience person or uh, in the, on the marketing team if you love the written word or you love uh, meeting a lot of people in a two-day span like JP does uh, <laughs> for most of the year every year and I think that would be my wrap up on the technical skills part if you're trying to build them. Go and learn and demonstrate. Well, Devonair, I think that is a, a beautiful wrap up uh, and I know we're short on time. So I just wanna ask uh, the rest of our panelists if you have any parting words of advice for people who are trying to break into the tech industry. I think something that we haven't touched on uh, I think is really important. Um, find um, a program. I think having that um, leg up with, with people and having them coaching you and helping you and reviewing your material um, is, such a, is such a huge asset. And they oftentimes have connections to help you have that extra edge, which is something really, really valuable. Um, so I would say try to find those right mentors or right people that can help you um, and really coach you. That's important. That's good. James, any parting words? Um, keep at it. I mean, just, it can be hard. It Just persevere. Persever that's, persevere. You know, keep going. I think, especially right now, that is some important information to part on. Well, thank you all so much um, for joining. Uh, Devin Air, do you have any information on how to apply if you're interested in Cockroach? Yeah, uh, absolutely. We just rolled out Easy Apply on LinkedIn. You can check us out there and just apply with a click of a button. Alternatively, uh, you can check out our website, uh, cockroachlabs.com careers, and check out what we have open there.